feet out of what showing blitz again. Four receivers wide side quickly in the hands of John White gets past Parker and now dragged down by Jim Cox. There is a flag down in the Eskimo backfield. Riley went down. He took a hit. Flag was right beside him. Jay Emery was in the neighborhood. Major foul, roughing a passer. Montreal number 41. 15 yards from the end of the play. First down. He's top defender last year. Two interceptions on the night, but 15 yards against him this time. Lines up on the outside, comes off the edge untouched, the push and goes low into the legs. Mike Brown. Push was okay, but he went too low. Changes field position dramatically. Now a first down at the Al's 40. And Riley will take off. Field opens up. A little daylight for Mike Riley. Just his second run of the game. And that's a first down inside the 20-yard line for the number eight rusher in the CFL into week five. Yeah, that, that's what's been surprising. That's just his second run tonight, and he was second for rushing quarterbacks behind his buddy Travis Lule in BC coming into this game, running the football. It's been a big part of, of when he's had success. He's got out and run, picked up first downs when he can. He's a lot better runner than most people give him credit for. Well, is it sneaky fast? It's his longest run of the year, 21. And he's had a run of 10 yards or more in each of the first five games this year. Now he swings it to Calvin McCarty down the sidelines. Broken tackle. Touchdown. Calvin McCarty stays in bounds and hits Bader. I got it. Quick decisions by Mike Riley sets it up. That's a couple of plays in this series where he just made that quick decision. Got the ball out of there quickly. Going to go to Calvin McCarty on the outside. And how about the balance? As he stays in, inbounds. He's been described as the X factor in the offense. A little bit of a fullback, running back, slot back. And combined it all on that play. 19-yard touchdown for McCarty. It's his first of 2013. And now the Eskimos are within six. Five play, 75 yard drive. There's Mike or John Bowman, defensive end. He gets in a tough situation here with Mike Riley. As he gets outside after that big run from Riley. Now, if you're John Bowman, what do you do? Do you come up and try and stop the running quarterback, or do you try and stay wide with the fullback out of the backfield? He was in between. Cal McCarty scores. Well divide on the kick return. And whoa, he gets cartwheeled on the get downfield by Mike Cornell. So that took just 92 seconds for the Eskimos to get back within six. Riley with the 21-yard run, a 15-yard penalty against Shea Emery, and those usually come back to haunt. Penalties have been an issue for Montreal, well, for both these teams, really. Couple of teams under the gun turning this one into a pretty interesting night in Montreal. Inside a handoff and Brandon Whitaker pops loose. Eskimos on it. Bubios has the football. And it is a fumble recovery by Edmonton. You know, I, I think the Alouettes here are gonna are gonna argue that his forward progress was stopped. I didn't hear any whistle. And I think Brandon Whitaker's forward progress had not been stopped. Backside play here. He's still pushing for yards, still pushing, and the ball is stripped out of there by Munoz. The run was holding him up, and as you mentioned, Munoz with the strip. Now, if forward progress is stopped, Chris, then, then they'll blow that dead, but it wasn't. Starting at the Palo 24-yard line. Touchdown away from the lead. Short drop. Down the rail. Touchdown. Carry Coke. Perfect throw from Mike Riley. 
first receiving touchdown of the year for Coke, who has a punt return major as well. Gary Coke is well covered. Riley goes to it, trusts his receiver, up over the top of Jeff Tisdale. And Kerry Cope with his second major of the night. So it's the Edmonton Eskimos offense that explodes. They capitalize on the Whitaker fumble. And somebody might have lit the fire under Mike Riley because this is a big fourth quarter for a guy who was lifted early in the game. Let's take a look at Kerry Cope's route first. Important for Kerry Cope on this route on the outside to get that separation, just a little bit of a fade route to get outside of Tisdale. Okay, now he's kind of trying to fight his hands off, but that's a small window for Mike Riley to get the football in there. Riley, big congratulations on the sideline from his teammates and coaching staff. Every time he has been challenged in his young career, Chris, you think back to the preseason in BC when he made that team. We told that it's a well-documented story. He had a couple series to get it done or he was gone. Scored two touchdowns, two touchdown drives, responded. From this game, in the second quarter, clearly he was disappointed and frustrated by it. Boston J, congrats on the marriage. But he has bounced back. Two touchdowns, 59 seconds. And a game that we might look back on as the start of Mike Riley's era in Edmonton. I think you're onto something there and taking advantage of the sudden change on the turnover. But a lot of football to be played here tonight. Stacked up short of the 30-yard line, but uh, a little more pressure now is placed on an Alouette offense that had a 13-point lead. And look back at that stop as they were deep in Edmonton territory. A chance to score a touchdown and go up by 17, settled for three, and now suddenly they're they're trailing. A long field in front of them. lead for Dan Hawkins crew has evaporated Brandon Whitaker nothing there Del Willis was around the football as that Edmonton defense tries to dig in for Greg Marshall ranked second against the pass coming in and as I mentioned at the break in the third quarter Anthony Calvillo has not put up big numbers through the air, certainly. He mentioned yesterday his message, be great at the ordinary. Don't do anything fancy, just do your job. He's seen a lot of pressures. What might be coming here? Calvillo gets it away. Alan Bruce, the catch, and a late hit on the quarterback will draw flags as well. So a big second down conversion catch and there'll be a penalty on Rennie Curran Major as well. Foul, roughing the passer, Edmonton number 35. Be 15 yards from the end of the play, first down. Well, it came back to haunt Shea Emery. Let's see if it does the same here yeah. against the Eskimo. Well, that's what you wonder. Rennie Curran is right in your screen here to the right of your screen. He's going to come on the blitz and can he pull off of this? in time right down the middle couple steps and actually goes high as well so first down near midfield and a mix up oh. and Calvillo's got to eat it Marcus Howard was bearing down and Calvillo turned one way and Whitaker had gone the other Calvillo zigged Whitaker zagged reverse out this or turn out this way and Whitaker had gone the opposite direction. 
Here you go, son. Uh, uh, ride in the side. It was supposed to be. There's no one to ride there. Loss of five. And it's the second Eskimo sack. Howard has his second of the year. Neither defensive end for the Eskimos had a tackle or a sack last week. They'll swing to Whitaker. And Whitaker gets it outside. And he'll get a first down. T.J. Hill was hanging on. Came close to the horse collar. But Brandon Whitaker converts on second and long. Oh, what a nice call here, too, by Mike Miller to, in this second and long situation, go back to Whitaker. He knows he's going to feel the pass rush. Get it outside. Get him in space. That little move that bounced him to the sideline gets him the first down. Sixteen on the pass and run, and a first down at the Edmonton 45-yard line. Alouettes go double tight end. Bruce showed that fly sweep again, but it's Whitaker up the middle and nothing doing. Ted Laurent's had a stout night. That is that double tight you talked about there, Chris, that the Alouettes will go to now when Christian Matt, who will play the tight end on one side, and Patrick Lavoie plays the tight end. There's Matt on the right and Lavoie on the left. And that's their unbalanced line with Lavoie playing tight end on the back side. And they like to run the ball there. They do have a few passes. It only the only problem with it in the passing game is it takes some receivers off the field. Big play upcoming, second and ten from the 45. Well, he'll take a shot. Flag is down, and the pass is incomplete. Instant intended for Richardson. And is this a holding call? Yes, against the Alouettes. And they're going to decline the call as T.J. Hill gets the option. Now they go back to it. Holding. Montreal, number 81. That penalty's declined. It'll be third down. Back to double tight. Christian Matt, one tight end. Patrick Lebois, the other. Now, when you, when you play the double tights here, the downside in the passing game is watch. Run the play, guys, and I'll show you. There's only three receivers now that Anthony Calville can go to. Stop it there. One here, one there, and one in the flat here. Those are his only targets available. Tried to go deep and couldn't hook up with S.J. Green. John White looks for the corner. Does he get it? Let's see where they mark it. And are they going to mark us? It's a single point, so he just missed the corner. And John White is arguing the call. And he thinks he got it. And from where it landed, I'm surprised they are not. Now they are going to rule it out at the two. Well, some confusion here on that last call by the officials who first said single point. Then they marked it at the two-yard line. Kivas Reed is at the spotters upstairs. See the replays we've been looking at. Very hard to determine where that ball went out. But he's going to challenge that this did not go out at the two. Well, let's take a look. Uh, Sean White sold it initially, and it looked like it was going to be spotted on the two-yard line, but we'll see where it bounces. It bounces right there. And see the official initially signals that it is a single point ball went through the end zone. That's what he's got his single finger up there. And then that ruling was overruled. And then Sean White and Glenn Johnson had... Uh, little debate and Edmonton is challenging that they believe they scored a single point on the kick we'll review the play not often that you see one team challenge that the other team has scored they want Montreal to have tied the game because the field position at the two is pretty uncomfortable for the Eskimos as it stands Let's and we get one more angle here now now take a look at the ref to the left of your screen here and he's gonna he's measuring it up with an official standing behind Sean White right now as they try and calibrate exactly where that went out now he at this point rules with one finger in the air that it is a single point in the end zone now somewhere along the way Sean White was discussing it with the official back behind him and they
they determined that it went out on the two yard line. Now, now the ruling is it's out on the two. Do you see enough that could overturn that ruling? Uh, you see that trajectory and it's hard to imagine it went out at the two, but it didn't go out just inside the pylon. I don't know if there's any evidence and this is a tough one for Kevis Reed to win. But I think he's got to challenge it. Yeah, it's, it's tough because the ball goes out in the air. And it's, it's interesting that the only Alouette who really argued the initial call of a single was Rashawn White 50 yards away. After review, the ruling on the field stands. The ball was out at the two-yard line. Edmonton loses their second timeout. That's right. Davis Reed had to burn one with that formation issue early on, so he has no timeouts left. That's a huge 43-yard punt by Sean White. And now Dan Hawkins puts it in the hands of his defense. It remains a one-point Eskimo lead. But as evidenced by the challenge, they would have given up the lead for better field position. Simeon Rotier flinched. Procedure, Edmonton number 65. Go back half the distance to the goal. Repeat, first down. Yeah, the right guard with all the noise here flinched early. Chip Cox almost created the safety. He, he comes off the edge here. And watch how John White has to break a tackle to not give up the safety and the football. Speaking of which, Davis Reed's got to decide if unsuccessful right. here, right. if you give up the lead on the safety. Riley will try and take that decision out of his hand. Second and seven. To the wide side, and that's not going anywhere. Ed Geedy takes Harry Koch out. Koch looking for a flag, but there is none. And You're now right. Reed has to make that tough decision. You know, with, with, with 6.42 left, you almost think that giving up the lead To get the field position would be worth it, but when you're a struggling team, do you ever want to give up a lead? Win not an issue here on a perfect night for football in Montreal. I mean, I mean you, you've got to give up two, I think, here. You, you've got to give up two because Montreal is going to catch this punt if they kick it away in field goal range. That divine waiting at the 48. Get and it. not a deep kick, but he may get a bounce. No, it's a, a bad bounce, and they'll just hop on it and cover it as Byron Parker got on the football, so now they're going to have the football with no yards, likely inside the 30. You know, if it was less time, Chris, I, I, I think more along the lines of let's see if our defense is playing pretty well. We really get a big kick. You don't want to give up the lead, but with this much time, you give up to get the field position back, make a long field for Calvillo with your Edmonton, defense playing well. Penalty, first what down. he might be saying is, is if, if we kick the ball away and we've given them the lead and they come back and get three, now we're down by, we need a touchdown. So, so yeah. or did Kivas Reed have a change of heart here because now all of a sudden there is a signal. Well, and they looked like they wanted to give up two and didn't get it in time. Terry Eisler signaling two, and yeah, he is. The net of 24 as it all turns out. Brandon Whitaker has a hole. Side steps away from shot. And another. And finally dragged down at the 
the 11. And a great run for Brandon Whitaker, 18. And for Brandon Whitaker, that may give him 100 on the night.